Go down this little row here, and there's a couple of other very unique things going on. This Falk Wolf has a different engine and tail on it. So it's a 190, but it's a different model. So it's actually longer than the ones you usually see. It is big. And it's got an, an inline engine. Inverted, I believe. And again, this is the only one of these things around, I think. Now, they're never gonna fly this one. This one went through a total restoration, but it's not gonna be flown because the only one of its type left. There's a whole bunch of 190s out there with the regular radial engines on them. There's a bunch of those out there. And you can have a brand new one built for you at this airfield. They'll, they'll build you a new one for about $3 million. This thing looks dangerous. Recrowded here today. There's a whole tour going on over there. I had to leave another pavilion because there were so many people in it. It's hard, hard doing the museum beat sometime. The Fuckwolf 190D13 one is, was one of the most advanced piston engine fighters ever built. The most notable change to the potent and successful F190 fighter design was the late war addition of a Junkers Jumo engine in the place of the earlier versions equipped with BMW radials. These long nose Fuckwolf's D models also had a stretched aft fuselage to maintain the fighter's center of gravity. D model fighters proved to be the most successful example of the 190 series, competing with the P-51 Mustang and late model Spitfires on even terms. However, Germany's lack of well-trained pilots and the shortage of fuel in the late stages of the war made the F-190D a less than effective weapon. This aircraft is the only 190D to have survived the war. The aircraft entered service in March of 1945, so very much at the end of the war. It served at the commander's plane of Fighter Wing 26. In May of 1945, the plane was surrendered to the Allies and shipped to Freeman Airfield, Indiana for evaluation. It was later given to the Georgia Institute of Technology and then passed through several private owners before being acquired by Doug Chaplin in 1972. In 2001, Goshawk Unlimited completed a thorough restoration of the rare aircraft. The FW-190 was acquired by the Flying Heritage and Combat Museum in 2007. It will not be flown because it is the only one of its types left in the world. Pretty sure they fired it up and drove it around though. They do that to all their planes when they get them, uh, when they declare them airworthy. They have to run, they have to not overheat, everything has to function, and they have to drive around. They have a Messerschmitt in the other hangar over there with original Jumo jet engines in it, a 262, and they have never flown it, but they will taxi it around. <laughs> Boy, that landing gear doesn't look like it's all the way out, but I guess it is. Inverted V12 engine in this one. And apparently they only made a few of them. Now that propeller definitely looks like one of those laminates. It's got the big fat sections right after the hub there. Just like the restored Stuka propeller at the back of this museum. Apparently these blades are made of wood and they have a laminate covering over them. And if you want to see what that looks like, there's one on the ground right here. There's one on the ground. They've got it cut away. And it's on the back of this motor that blew up. But here is one cut. You can see the wood. Pretty neat. And if you come over here, and you 
you see the sun reflecting off it, you can see the laminate right on the blade there, on the side of the blade. On this engine, where it blew up the rod, the rod came through, through there. I decided not to use this engine for a restoration. But back over to that very unique airplane. You'll notice the flaps are down and they are made of wood. It was the end of the war. Materials were in short supply and anything that could be made out of wood was made out of wood. As a matter of fact, in the very back of this shot, you can see a V2 rocket and the whole nose of the thing's <laughs> framed up in wood. If you can believe that, there's not too many V2 rockets around, but this museum's got one. In Europe, especially in Germany, you don't see them with a swastika sitting on the tail. In Germany, that's illegal. You can't even, can't even have that. Here, you're in a museum in the United States, the country that won the war against Germany. And they can do whatever they want. They say this airplane is flyable, but no one is going to fly it ever again because it's the only one. It's parked next to a uh, Japanese Oscar that's original and also the only one of its kind in existence. So uh, this one's flyable, but they'll never fly it. Definitely looks longer than the uh, 190s I'm used to seeing. Then they got a weird saddle in the tail there. We'll get in close on her. Camera's doing something weird, I'm gonna have to reboot it here. This Falk Wolf is so rare that they won't fly it. It has a different engine than the majority of them produced. It's using an, an inverted V12 engine, and they didn't make all that many of them, so it's considered so rare that it is flyable, it is restored to flying condition, but they will not fly it because it's a one of a kind. One of the things you'll notice, the biggest difference between the F-190s is that to put the, this engine in, they had to lengthen the tail. So there's another one of these at the museum here. That's a regular radial engine F-190. And it does not have that huge extra section in the tail right there. I'm getting close on her. By the time they'd made enough of them, they didn't really have a, all that many trained people to fly them anymore. It's a bit of an issue. So this is a super, super rare one. There probably are close to 100 of um, f 190s still in existence today. But this is the only one like this. Boy, you really see that fuselage section plug. It just looks like a plug. Wow, it does not look very... Uh, 
Just engineering wise, it just doesn't look cool. These things, of course, were built to take off on dirt. 